All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how I put a battery disconnect on my 2006 GMC pickup. Uh, this truck went from my daily driver to only being driven once every couple months, and I'm sick of having a dead battery. So I'm going to put a battery disconnect on it, and I know that you can buy cheap aftermarket uh, devices that will disconnect a battery cable with a, with a, a wing nut or a, uh, like a knife switch. Those look fairly cheap to me, something that could possibly leave me stranded. And it just so happened that I had this extra Flaming River Big Switch available. So I'm going to use that because it was on the shelf. And I'm going to show you how I've got it mounted. And I'm going to show you how I've got it connected to the battery without changing any of the stock battery cables. When I modify something, I absolutely hate changing the factory configuration. I don't mind adding stuff to the truck or to a vehicle as long as when I take it back off, there's no signs of it ever being on the truck. And the only thing that I had to do was mount this switch to this fuse box surround or this fuse box shroud, I guess you'd call it. And I had to drill two holes in this plastic housing to mount the switch. And even that kind of bothered me, but I had to make a sacrifice. So let me show you how I got that switch mounted. First of all, this lifts off of here. And you can see the Flaming River big switch bracket. I've got it installed with two bolts, well, two bolts and two lock nuts. And on the inside, I've used some big heavy uh, fender washers to help, you know, because this is just plastic. So I wanted to help spread the load out a little bit. And uh, this Flaming River big switch, this thing's uh, pretty overkill. It's rated for like, I think, 2,500 amps or something like that. Uh, I bought a few of them back when I was building some 4,000 amp uh, jump-starting units. And I happen to have an extra one on the shelf, so that's what I'm going to use. Do you need this for this application? No. Something between this and those cheap battery disconnects that you can buy on eBay. Something in middle line would be my opinion, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. So let me get this back on here, and I'll show you how we're going to connect it. Okay, and just to be clear, I, I wanted to make sure that those bolt heads on the inside of this mount were not interfering with any of the wiring. I didn't want anything to chafe back there. So I was able to snake my, my borescope camera down into one of, these, one of these holes and look and make sure that none of these were rubbing against any of the wiring. So that's good there. And the battery cable that I'm going to use to do this, I ordered off of Amazon. These are AC Delco two-gauge side post battery cables. I ordered two of these. Uh, they're 32 inches long each. They were actually on sale. These were very high-quality battery cables. So they come in a cardboard box. They're not. Uh, these are not cheap quality cables. But they're longer than I need them to be. And I could just kind of coil up the excess cable. But because I've got a crimper... I bought some extra battery terminal lugs, and I'm going to shorten these cables up a little bit. And this extra cable that comes on each one, I don't need for anything, so I'm going to cut that short. And then I'm going to just put a piece of uh, shrink tube over that to kind of, instead of tape, I guess, to just kind of hold that in place. And I'll crimp a new end on, and I'll put some new shrink uh, heat shrink on the end of this. So when I get done remaking these two battery cables for my application, they'll be they'll be perfect. So first thing I'm going to do is take a measurement from one of the posts on the bottom of the disconnect switch over to the side post here. And that's going to be... I'll mark it with a Sharpie. Then I'll cut it and crimp a new end on, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my cables made. They turned out really nice. You can see how I... You can see how I put some shrink tubing over the ends, and then you can see how I use another piece of shrink tubing to hold that ground wire tailing right there but this is how i'm going to hook them up i've got one coming from the negative terminal on the battery going over to a terminal on the bottom of the main disconnect switch and then from the main disconnect switch the other terminal and i'm going to put two of these side terminal ends face to face with a longer bolt in the middle and they do make i'll show you here i'm going to use a pair by the way, if you don't have a pair of these Knipex pliers that is designed to, if you can see on the bottom of the jaw there, let's see if you can get that in there. They're designed to grab a hex bolt on the end. Instead of on the side, they're made to grab a hex bolt on the end. 
If you don't have a pair of these, you don't know what you're missing. They're life changing. Anyway, we'll take out the uh, the short bolt, and I've got a longer bolt here. Now I have not tried this off camera, so we're going to make sure this works. If not, I've got a plan B. But we'll put that, and you got to get it, work it into the underneath the piece of rubber there. So that is a longer bolt. And then take the factory bolt out of here. Okay. Now the reason why they make that extra bolt kit along with this spacer is so that you can take, I've got a nut there. So you can take two of those, say this is one of the side terminal ends, and put another side terminal battery connector so you can stack them on top of each other for if you're going to run a dual battery setup. You need to be able to connect your two batteries together. Well, I'm obviously using it for a different purpose. I'm going to see here, I have not tested this off camera, if this longer bolt, along with this spacer, that's going to guarantee electrical connection between the two battery cables. If that, okay, so that's not, that bolt's not going to be long enough. I have a plan B. Bear with me. Okay, I got a, a little bit longer, about a quarter inch longer flange bolt here. I'm actually going to do it the other way. I am going to put them, I am going to stack them on top of each other instead of face to face. They're going to get, well, they're both, both these cables are facing the same direction. You can see that in the camera. And then this spacer now is being used the correct way. And what I'll do is I will take this extra long 5 16 flange bolt, got a flange head on it, and I will get this all the way through there, through there, and then I will take my lock nut and screw that together. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten that bolt up, and that should be a good electrical connection between the two of them. I'm using a lock nut here, and this is not a nylock. This is a, some people would call it a stover bolt or a prevailing torque bolt. It's got kind of a crushed end on it. I'm sure you guys have seen them before. Get this bolt tightened up. Okay, so now I've got the two side terminal posts connected together with a nut and bolt, proper spacer in the middle, and then the other end of this goes underneath the last terminal of the kill switch. I've got it connected up temporarily. I have not uh, finished putting the nuts on there. I have a couple more of those lock nuts for the bottom of the terminals on this disconnect switch, and uh, the reason, there's one thing I wanted to cover here. Now, typically in automotive wiring, or in general wiring across the board, you would normally put a switch in the hot circuit. You would disconnect the hot side. And it really doesn't matter as long as you break the circuit anywhere within the circuit, you've got it disconnected. Well, if I put this disconnect switch on the negative side of the circuit for one main reason, because stuff like this right here, this unprotected terminal, and the unprotected terminals underneath the bottom of this disconnect switch, they're negative ground. Now, they're not positive. So that's no different having this bolt exposed than, say, the bolt over here on the fender, or, you know, this metal master cylinder, or the bolt over here on the alternator. It's, it's, they're all negative ground. So it's, there's no threat of, you know, of it touching and arcing anything else. Whereas if this was positive, you'd be worried about other metal components in the engine compartment touching and, and causing a, a short. So now, like I said, there's many ways you could have done this. This happened to be the way I decided to do it. But yeah, I've just got to put the cover back on the fuse box, put the corner bracket back on the fender here, and uh, I'm disconnected. That's on, that's off. So now when I park the truck, when I come back to drive it in a month and a half or whatever it may be, 
I can open the hood back up and reach in and turn it back on and my battery should be you know fully charged and and lastly the battery I put in here I took the Walmart battery out I put a Sam's Club battery in it I'm not saying it's any better than the Walmart I'm sure it's the same uh, but what I did was the Chevy truck here or GMC truck excuse me takes a group 78 and I was able to get a 78 DT which I'm assuming stands for dual top and that way this this battery has side posts and top posts and you can also get them I believe in a group 34 DT which would be the same battery now don't quote me on that but that's what my research you know this battery as a 78 comes only with side posts this battery in a 34 only comes with top posts so you can either you can either get the 78 dual post or the 34 dual post it's the same battery so i retained the factory side posts on the battery but now if i ever need to jump start somebody or jump start myself i can hook up to some top posts because hooking up down here way down here to this positive side post in between the fuse box and down in there trying to put a big battery cable clamp on these little nubs that stick out is i mean it's just it's just the most frustrating thing you've ever had to deal with so this way i've got the best of both worlds the only thing i got to do if i want to put it back to original is put a short bolt back in that one battery cable connect it back to here and remove all the rest it's back to original anyway guys this is just how i did it on my truck give you an idea if you're going to do it on your truck hopefully it'll give you some helpful ideas but that's all i have for now please be sure to like share and subscribe for more thanks for watching